In this session, we'll focus on some common date-related functions that we might need as and when we work on Excel. But first, let me also introduce you to the Formulas menu. Here under the Formula menu, you will find access to all the functions that are there in Microsoft Excel. It's just that they are segregated depending on the nature of the usage of those functions. For example, when I mention about date and time, here we have the date and time section and we have all those dates and time related functions available over here. Now there is a possibility that we may not use most of these all the time. Probably these could be some specific niche segment work related. But yes, we do have some more functions here. For example, financial here. Now financial domain is quite huge. Maybe not everyone would be dealing in fixed income instruments or derivatives. So probably they may not use these functions. They might just stick to the PMT or time value of money functions and lock many things over here. So depends on your business usage accordingly, you will find your functions over here. Now logical functions, these are some common functions which you should know at the back of your hand. We'll discuss about them in a different session. Now text-based functions, these are the ones which can help you adjust the text the way you need it or probably just extract some part of the text and maybe do some other activities as well but it's everything to do with the text on the cell on the excel file everything to do whatever you have in the respective cells now further we also have the lookup and reference functions these will also be covered while during our advanced excel sessions further now mathematical and trigonometric functions now these are extreme niche genre where you might not find everyone working on this and these are highly specialized ones so in case if someone is into statistical analysis or advanced calculations you might want to use these but this session would focus on some of the common advanced excel functions that we need or commonly required so if you want more functions there are some more statistical engineering cube information based functions which will touch a couple of those and lot more now if you're using microsoft office 2019 the amount of functions that you see on your screen would be the limit however if you're using office 365 or now called as microsoft 365 with every update or rather i would say with every major update you might come across some new functions added to this list so this list keeps on piling up and there would be some old functions which may be deprecated or no longer in use so now to begin with let's start with the basic or the easiest way to get the date let's say i need to get today's date there is a very good keyboard shortcut called Control, you need to hold down the control key on the keyboard and hit semicolon once. You have this. That's today's date over here. And you see, if you double click on this, it's editable. You can change anything that you need. Well, we also have a function in Excel called today. If I type today function and just close the bracket, that's it. You don't need to add any more parameters to this and hit enter. Well, it does return the same date. Then the question arises, why should I use a control semicolon or why should I use a today function? Which one is best and which can be used when? But probably it totally depends on the nature of your requirement. To begin with, let's say I'm raising an invoice today and I have it on Excel and this is the date I have entered that's perfectly fine i use the control semicolon now five days down the line if i come back and check the invoice date it still remains as feb 3rd to 2021 however if i were to use the today function it will always show the date on which you have accessed the file it will not change unless and until there would be a change of date so this is a dynamic function and this is static it will remain as it is so you need to check where and how you need to utilize that whenever there is a need for today's date and if there is a need for 
frequent or day-to-day -day update to be made on that date. So today function does the good job rather than manually entering control plus a control shift. You need to hold down the control key and the shift key on the keyboard and hit semicolon again, and then you get the time. Well, in case if you want the date and time together in a single cell, I can just do this control semicolon. I get the date space control shift semicolon again, and I get the time as well. So we have the date as well as the time in a single cell. Well, we do have a solution. Well, Excel also has a function for this and that's now. Again, no parameters required, just hit enter and you have this. So, well, again, the point is exactly the same. Here it is static and here it's dynamic. Now, since we also see the time here, maybe after a minute or so, if I were to update on any cell, I would see this date changing, which I will highlight right now. For now, just make a note of this. It's 1423 as the time. And now let me just do anything on Excel. Like uh, I type something like test or anything that I do and hit enter. That means there is an activity that has happened on Excel on this particular file. I hit enter and notice the date changed. This date changed over here. Now, so that means every time there is an event in Excel, be it opening the file or changing some cell or anything, this function updates and you will see the latest date and time over here. However, in case of today, you do not see any change because throughout the day, the date remains the same. It might change in case if you're working around midnight and it's just past midnight and you do some change like this on Excel and they could update as well. Now, this is also applicable in case if you undo and redo as well, the cells would refresh and that's how robust these functions are. Now I would also take you across some more functions of Excel, but for, let me also get some more date over here. Let's say I have a start date. I have a start date. I take it as 1, 1, 2021. That's Jan 1st, 2021. And then I also need and I take March 31st, 2021. So now we have the two dates over here and we will explore some more functions of Excel or we'll explore some more functions pertaining to date through these dates. First thing. I have something called as a day function and what do we get in this day function? I select the date or rather I'll just focus on the end date for now. Okay. But first let me just enter the day function. We have the day function and I select the date here. I'm focusing on the end date only because it's for Jan 1st, 2021 it may not see much of variation, but this is a good example here. And notice this over here. It asks for serial number. Now Excel recognizes dates in the form of a serial number. So don't be baffled if you enter a proper date somewhere and it shows in the form of numbers, something like 44,000, one, two, three. Hey, don't be confused or it's nothing wrong with Excel. It's just that the cell was designed to be formatted as a number and that's the reason you see this. Just change the format to short date or any other custom format, which I've explained earlier. Just for now, I'll select the short date. And here we have this. It's what? October 19, 2020. And that's it. So there would be time when you would have just entered a random number and you do not see anything happening over here. It was supposed to be an, a number, but it appears like, let's say a date. Now, 3rd Jan 2038. All right, now that's crazy, right? Okay, but we have some date. Now this is not what I entered and I had just entered one, two, three, four, five, six. I hit enter, Excel takes it as a date. So I can just change this to number format and that's perfect, okay? 